afternoon viewers. This is Yes Online TV and we are here with um, Professor Danka of KNUST and um, we are here live on Presby University campus. There was a conference held three days ago and he is here to tell us his views and share whatever he learns with us. So good afternoon Dr. Danka. Good. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Good afternoon. Uh, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Yeah. Um, our viewers want to know, um, please, what, what has been your views so far about the conference? Yes, um, I, yeah, I think this has been an, a real eye-opener conference. Um, I think this is the first of its kind uh, being done here. I really would like to commend uh, the organizers of PUCG for such a conference. Um, basically, uh, implementation of the um, SDGs have been on ad hoc basis. Each researcher, lecturer doing his own thing. So for PUCG to come up with uh, bringing like-minded people to this workshop to see where we are, the gaps ahead, and then see the steps to take that we all move in one direction is a, is a great thing. I especially like the diversity of participants. Um, this will encourage each uh, participant that attended um, to be an ambassador so that when we go back to our uh, home institutions, we can be individual stewards and spread the message. So this has been a big uh, eye opener. Okay, so in your own opinion, should this be repeated or...? Yes. Uh, as I said, this is just the beginning. Um, we going outside is going to try, most of us are going to try and see how we can also replicate this in our institutions. So apart from we the individuals going to replicate, um, this shouldn't be the first thing. Please should try and organize a similar one but with maybe a different team but all related to sustainability of our environment so i think it should be repeated yeah and what tell us more about the um, primates conservations yeah um, primates are a group of uh, mammals in the world um, that are facing exceptional peril uh, this is because um, their habitats are being seriously encroached on. In Ghana, there are a lot of human activities that impact negatively on primates. Illegal chainsawing, galamsaying, all these are done in primate habitat, key habitats. Look at what's happening around the tour. Look at Tano of uh, forest reserves. And it's going on in so many places in Ghana. So we have to come together as scientists and halt this activity because uh, we are lucky to be still seeing some species. How things are going, I see that within the next 10 years, our children might not even know some of the species that existed. It will be in books. So it is uh, our God-given duty to make all efforts to ensure that these species are conserved, yeah. Thank you, and viewers, this is Professor Danka. So we want to know how it will get to the government, since you are higher than some of us, so you could reach it out to them for us. Yes, um, the first step is what we have taken. What we are doing here is another step. It's going to go out, it's going to be aired. Someone who has not, or who had no idea about this situation is going to get it. All of the participants that we've been here, as we go, we are going to spread the gospel. We are going to do it. And what is key is that we need to institute this in our various governance system. And when it's in the institutionalized in our governance system, it becomes more stable. So um, we would keep on doing what we do. We have been advocating against all these irrational human activities. We keep on doing it. And one day, one day, one day, uh, I think the government will listen to it. Yeah.
Okay, thank you. And we also wanted to know about the um, um, bauxite mining at um, Atua. I've been to Atua before. It's a very beautiful view. And I never expected mining to be done over there. The Tiwa's case, you know, is one of the most controversial uh, topics in conservation in Ghana. Um, it's the age-old controversy between economic gains and conservation. Um, a Tiwa is an exceptional case because of the high and exceptional biodiversity it holds. And secondly, because it is a big water shed for many rivers that feed a lot of communities. Uh, one thing that we should think or run in everybody's mind, how do we balance the short-term gains, which is the economic gains, against the long-term benefit of conservation, restoration of uh, watersheds? I think we shouldn't think in the near future, we should think ahead. So even the government is looking for ways and avenues in creating money. That within the next 10 years, that thing will be off. But when Etiwa is left, it remains a generational, um, yeah, it, it remains something that is passed on and on and on and on. So for me, I am not for the mining at all. It's something our forefathers have left for us. It is in the Bible, even, that what God entrusts in your care, you have to keep it. So it is our responsibility uh, as stewards to make sure that a tiwa persists for future generations, our children's children's children, to come and see. And it, it supports a lot of livelihoods too. So the, 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 even though we get a lot of money, I'm not for that short-term benefit. Yeah. Thank you very much. We really enjoyed this interview and we hope to see more conferences. This is my first time being at a conference and I was really grateful for all your contributions and I'm sure my viewers are also enjoying that. Thank you very much. Thank you.